can uh, we can stop after that and then continue in the next continue on wednesday is that okay i, I would say if it is important we can do it starting next starting next okay yeah. we can do we can do that also um so we can then sorry end. for that too i don't know it came in uh, well this is a shared account right so i'm guessing that uh, yeah, I, I need to uh, do some analysis what happened exactly, so I'll come back. Yeah, yeah. Maybe speak to Nam Ruchi Prabhu because he is the other person who has access to the account. Yeah, I'll come back. Yeah. Okay, so we'll sign up. Any concluding thoughts or questions? Any discussions on what we, we had? I have a I little just, copy. Um, when we say, you know, uh, the, the Kriyasta, we, we spend our time in this four way. Now, how, how much does this apply to us and how do we try to, to mitigate this, you know? Even maintaining, maintaining family members there, you know, which is something that we do. Making money, we do. We sleep so, also. <laughs> right, right. So in the in the purport of uh, NOI verse one, the 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 Vacha Vegam Manasakrod Vegam, in the purport actually Shri Prabhupada nicely describes the answer to this question. Yeah. That um, uh, uh, two two things that uh, so so he acknowledges the fact that we need to do it. But then he puts two considerations on it, that we do it only as much as needed. Mm -hmm. And then whatever we do, we do it in relation to Krishna. Because the very next verse is Atyara Priyashya, so that's, that's, the, that's, the lead, that's the lead of verse. <clears throat> so all this sleeping, or maintaining, making money, um, they come in the category of sustenance, and they come in the category of duty. That if you are if you are a man, then it's your duty to maintain your family. If you are a citizen, it's your duty to pay taxes. So they come in the context of of one who is living there as part of the of the world. But uh, if you apply these two considerations. That we don't overly endeavor, mm -hmm. we don't sleep too much, we don't run after money too much, we don't become excessively attached um, uh, to the family. And the second is then Prabhupada explains that all this can be can also be dovetailed to 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 helping us serve Krishna. And then he gives the examples. Um, there's a long purport. Prabhupada expands on it nicely. Mm -hmm. you make money. You make money to sustain yourself. But then also use that money to serve Krishna, either by serving devotees or by serving the deities, or uh, by helping spread spread the movement. You have a family, but train them to be Krishna, uh, train them to be Krishna consciousness. If you sleep, then uh, even the Prabhupada doesn't say that, but. Uh, if you notice the terminology for sleep in his con, and there is a philosophical basis, when people say that, you know, somebody says that, you know, Maharaj is sleeping, they don't say Maharaj is, is sleeping, they say Maharaj is, is resting, right? So essentially, he's resting his body so that it is rejuvenated in the service of Krishna. So that's why this phrase is used that, you know, I'm taking rest. So rest is that, you know, the body is another instrument in the service of Krishna. For the instrument, you know, sometimes, like if you have a car, we have to do the oil change, we have to take care of the routine maintenance, put gas in it, and that way it's ready to serve us. So similarly, if you look on this body as something that is an instrument to serve Krishna, then in order to continue serving, one of the things we need to do is to rest it. So in that in that in that mood, uh, you know, we dovetail these things. 
that okay, Prabhu? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Okay. Uh, Paramatma Prabhu? Yeah. Um, uh, just, uh, we were giving a summary of the first canto and um, uh, the last two chapters uh, of the first canto, there was um, uh, this point about uh, how Maharaj Parikshit, he felt so um, uh, guilty that he has uh, done some transgression. And uh, in my estimation, it was it was negligible. It was just like not uh, not not anything major. And uh, something keeps uh, you know going through my own mind that I do farming, for example, and uh, and and when you do farming, it's unavoidable. I have a big farm, and then you you have to you know, um, even if you do organic farming, whatever, there is so much pests, so much insects, sometimes you have to kill plants, I mean, on, let's say unwanted plants, and you're taking life all the time. And, uh, it, 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 you know, it keeps on my mind all the time that I'm a devotee. And somehow or other, I'll get implicated, you know, by all these things. I just like to give you a comment on that. So the first part of your realization is accurate, Prabhu, that, uh, um, uh, I mean, not only you, but anybody who's living in this material world is following the, is following the, the premise of uh, Jiva Jiva Se Jiva Nam, that in order to survive, one Jiva takes the life of another Jiva. <clears throat> so when we cook, we, 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 we naturally, even if you're vegetarians, we cook, we kill, kill the plants, when we light a fire, we kill so many entities. The fire of our digestion also kills so many, um, so many living entities. So, so, uh, so, so just, the, it just, just, just the act of living in the material world is sinful. In one of the commentaries on, the, on this verse in chapter nine, where Krishna says, Apichya Sudhura Charo Bhajate Ma Manant Mark, that uh, uh, gen the generally understood uh, translation for it is that um, even if a devotee commits the most sinful activities, Vishwanath Chakravarti Sapa gives a slightly different explanation. That, uh, that he says, even if one is a devotee, he commits most sinful activities. And he explains that, so he, 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 uh, he attributes the api, the, the even if, in a different way. And then he explains it through this process that you just talked about, that even if a person is a devotee, he commits sinful activities because of these reasons. That uh, um, just because uh, to sustain his body, uh, he has to kill and to sustain the family and just for sustenance basic for basic sustenance he has to kill there uh, but krishna he assures in that word so uh, so krishna says that such a person is is, is a sadhu if he is if he is properly situated so through that word sakshwati thakur is is explaining to us that uh, if the predominant occupation is bhakti, then Krishna is assuring us that uh, the secondary occupation that is done in order to sustain oneself is uh, uh, is forgiven. Um, otherwise, the process of karmakand, um, all these activities, even sustenance activities, they group. Which is why karm kand is basically a self defeating defeating process. That uh, you know, while while you're trying to elevate yourself, you're at the same time um, dragging yourself down. But through the process of bhakti, the the forgiveness of Krishna appears, and um, uh, that forgiveness, it 
absolves us of uh, the inadvertent sinful activities that 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 we do and then sustenance falls in that category thank you thank you so much your, your answer is very reassuring i i i have another i think we have a couple of minutes more i have another uh, question if i could go ahead um i i, I was reading uh, the um uh, the overview of the chapter that we are doing right now, this uh, the second canto uh, from Burijan Prabhu's uh, uh, unveiling his lotus feet, and uh, in the first verse there is a uh, a little commentary that he gave, and he said that the goal of the Srimad Bhagavatam is to awaken uh, the hearer to his or her loving relationship with Krishna. And uh, it goes on and on, but uh, I'm, I'm going to the second paragraph where it says that if one doesn't truly accept the absolute truth as a person, then one will be unable to have a, a loving relationship with him. And then it, it goes on. Loving relationship, uh, loving relationships are possible only between persons. And then, then this, this is the question I have. Uh, when the impersonalists perform bhakti, as some Mayavadis do, they can practice only a shadow of true devotional service. This is because they are not really attempting to please the Lord. Uh, they don't even accept him as a person. Rather, their bhakti is based on their attempt to lose their individuality, to become one with this, with, with Krishna's from Jyoti. Then it goes on to say that such service is not devotional offering, but an offering based on selfish motivation. Uh, the means that, this means that while serving the Lord's deity form, impersonalists use the service they perform as a vehicle uh, to become the deity, and all this seems very be bewildering to you know to me. I I I I never saw it like that. That the impersonalist even you know is associated with uh, with the term devotional service here. But here, Burijan Prabhu is saying uh, that they practice only a shadow of true devotional service. Um, I don't know. What um, what's your comment? So, Prabhu, this actually comes in a subsequent verse in the chapter, and uh, Prabhupada also comments um, on it that uh, the impersonalist they use bhakti as a via media. So they worship the deity as uh, a step in the process of. As Bhujan Prabhu says, as becoming the deity, or they will worship Krishna mm -hmm. as a step, which means they say in the neophyte stage, because I don't have that uh, concentration to worship on the, abs the, the absolute. So, to help me uh, concentrate, the deity is there, and the deity will help me to. Uh, concentrate. Um, so I can share with you uh, um, an anecdote, well, not an anecdote, self realization that Raminda Saruprabhu once shared with me that when he joined the, the Hare Krishna movement, he was a full on impersonalist and completely you know, understanding the conception of God as without a form, etc. And then he went to the temple and then he said everything that they told him, he completely agreed with it. They said, this is the dirt deity, you need to worship the deity. He said, yes, we need to worship the deity so that later on I can worship the impersonal form. And they said, you have to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He said, yes, you have to chant the mantra so that later on I can chant Om and become, and, and become liberated. 
And then he mentioned that one day it was, and this continued for a while, a while meaning for a few months. And then he said one day he was, he was um, eating prasadam and the devotee sitting next to him, he commented to him that unless you accept Krishna as a person, you will never make any advancements. So then Ravindra Sabhupu said that that completely stuck stuck him. Somehow he had never heard anybody make this direct statement to him. So then he said, oh, these Hare Krishnas are not for me. They're completely messed up. So he stopped going to the temple. And he would still chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra again as a way to, 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 to chant the home. And then he says that, you know, by that time he had become too addicted to chanting. He had become too addicted to prasadam, to the devotees. So he resisted for a long time that the philosophy is messed. But then he couldn't live without it. So ultimately he gave up and then he went back to the temple and with a more, with a more, uh, with a more open mind. So when I was reading Prabhupada's purport on this, this, this very topic, then his, his uh, realizations were coming to my mind. So essentially, the impersonal is use the process of bhakti as a means to an end. So externally, they may seem like they are performing devotional service. But the basic de definition of devotional service is that it has to be favorable to Krishna. So externally, you may be standing in front of the deities, offering obeisances. You may even have a deity in your house. You may chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra but it's not favorable to Krishna. So that's why it does not, it does not uh, get them anywhere. I remember when I was in Rindavan, um, I, was, I was traveling with another person who actually lives in Rindavan. And um, he's a, so there are many temples in Rindavan. So he is the overseer of an ashram. I was living in that ashram. He was a caretaker, kind of the overall manager and very favorable to his con. So he, he, I was traveling with him and, um, and then he says that, you know, all this that has been done by Krishna in Vrindavan, these leelas that he has done, and he's accepting all that. In the leelas that he has done, the deities that have been established, they're all to help the people with lesser intelligence. So that ultimately they can, they can become one with God. Now he was he was a he was a elderly man and very respected in his community. I did not say anything um, to him, but I was shocked. He's living in Vrindavan for many many years, and uh, the ashram that he lives has a temple with Radha Krishna deities. And uh, in the morning, he's the first one to be there, jumping and dancing and singing Kirtan, but conception is completely different. But again, his conception is this, that till I attain perfection in my impersonal understanding, I will use this as a means to an end. Uh, my, my, my understanding is that the, the, when it comes to deity, they will uh, usually worship what's called Panchupasana means Durga, Shiva, and they will equate all. Vishnu is equal to Shiva is equal to like that. So even in terms of deity, it is not like the, the deity, whether it's Krishna deity or what it's the concept, it's Swayam Bhagwan, you know, it's, it's not like that. They have a, a different um, understanding uh, of, of of what the deity, you know, is. Uh, I mean, so that is true. That is true because again, because of their uh, tattva vibrama, they, you know, depending on where they are getting their guidance from. Um, so you'll be surprised by the number of impersonalists in Vrindavan, and uh, many of them may be worshiping Krishna but with the same conception that Krishna is the temporarily, temporarily manifest form of the Brahman. And then he came to attract us back to the 
Brahma. And I'm, I'm summarizing the philosophy, but they have a very deep philosophy that talks about many verses in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, generally, they don't quote Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is difficult to quote. But they talk about the, the verses in Bhagavad Gita, it talks about the various parts of the Vedas, where they say that the Brahmans, the Brahman sent Krishna in order to attract us back to the Brahman. When Krishna says, surrender unto me, he is saying, surrender unto the Brahman within me. Or he says, the surrender surrender unto, this is Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, he says, surrender unto the, the you that is in me, which means surrender unto yourself. So when you start listening to the impersonal philosophy, then it gets very bewildering, the way they twist words and what they do. But the underlying reason for all this is that uh, uh, they just don't know. So they have taken a fact, they have twisted it, and simple facts, you know, they're 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 uh, self-sustaining. They stand on their own. Yeah, but if I if I try to justify that day is night, then I have to spend a lot of time saying that there's night somewhere else in the world and that part of the world is the same as this part of the world so you can understand that this day is night and whatever. But the person looking at me will say, what a fool you are. I can see with my eyes this day. Why are you trying to, to, to say all this? So that's what the impersonalist. More than the impersonalist, the Mayavadis. The impersonalists are Brahmavadis. They are a little different. They are, um, um, they are more well-situated. They know... They know the position of Krishna, they know the position of Brahman, but for different reasons they're attracted to the to the Brahman. And like our Sukhdev Goswami, right? He's a Brahmavadi impersonalist. And for whatever reason, he was attracted, like the four Kumars, they were impersonalist. So Prabhupada says that when they get the mercy of a devotee, it does not take them too long to become. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I think this is why uh, Shri Prabhupada uh, talk about impersonal Brahman so much, uh, the impersonalist, because maybe, you know, we have a little bit in us. He said it himself, no? Many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, once he was giving this class in 26 seconds and... Uh, you know, he was speaking very, very, very heavily against the impersonalists, that they're rascals and they're cheaters, they're offenders. And then one of the person who was new to the class, you know, uh, you know uh, so he didn't know much. He thought that there's a particular person that Prabhupada is talking about. So then he asked another person that, uh, uh, who is this guy, Mayavadi? He seems to have offended Swamiji a lot. Maya, Swamiji is very upset at him. And the person said, no, 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 it's not a person. It's a philosophical concept. And the person later on went on to become a devotee and he was sharing that uh, I then realized that Prabhupada was not talking in abstract. He was talking directly to us. So when he was speaking about Mayavadi, he was speaking to the, he was speaking to us because whether we like it or not, we are all to some extent or the other Mayavadis. Mayavadis are one who put faith in Maya. And to some extent, we, all, we, are, we are all that. If we were not, then we would have full faith in Krishna. But right now we are a little, little bit of this, little bit of that. And hopefully with mercy of Guru and Krishna, we'll be more of that. But right now, you know, we also have faith in, we also have faith in Maya. The next verse actually that they have the Deha Atma Sena that actually talks about talks about this the the Mayavadi conception. No, Prabhuji, is uh, Brahmavadis are there in today's world, Prabhuji? It's a good question. I don't know if there are any, uh, like if there are any organized societies or there's any like organized movement that supports the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Brahmavadi from the purist conception. 
but all these movements that were started in the in the 17th 18th centuries they're all impersonal movements the 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 one started by um, ram krishna the one started the arya samaj well arya samaj is atheist but uh, many movements were started at that time that uh, uh, subscribe to the impersonal notion but uh, they subscribe to the impersonal notion not accepting the fact that it is based on the personal form of krishna so they subscribe to the opposite notion that the personal form of krishna is based on the on the impersonal form that the that the the liberated brahman comes in a personal form to to help the conditioned brahman so they have a different notion i don't believe i, I mean I, i i would not i would not be able to attest to it completely but i do not believe that there are uh, there are the purest brahmavadis existing yes thank you very much okay thank you apologies for the technical snags thank you for bearing uh, with us we'll stop over here ಭೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್ಮೀಷ್